I will start. And uh, so the, the topic of discussion is basically on uh, community effort ground. A couple of guys before were talking about these ways and uh, sorry, Python and Asia catalog and Scoop and And all these pieces of these uh, essentially part of bigger computer system that we have. And so today around 12 to 15 maybe once to the process. And a big talk is essentially one project. Like six months ago, five months ago, we didn't even talk about big talk here, so 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 we know it's essentially a project that helps you to how to do it, um, gather together all these little small and not so small pieces of the system and make sure they actually behave nicely with each other. And when I say behave nicely with each other, what it means that how to do guarantees that dusting components have all the UIs in place and can essentially uh, work seamlessly with uh, underlying data storage and uh, uh, data branches in GFS metrics. And uh, we came around actually um, just a few, a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago. Uh, and before that, uh, uh, people were doing mostly whatever they were willing to do with the uh, web system in the sense that every single data shop was doing their own validation and verification uh, of the data we need send them to us. And uh, once the digital came around, before the digital came around, we actually had this, uh, I don't know how to call it, it's not actually a diagram, it's a huge pile of garbage in the <laughs> In the sense that there is 2,500 different versions of, of the tool that were released, not, not necessarily released. Uh, have commercial support, open source support. They derive from each other in very wild manners. Uh, some beats, uh, some, some, some uh, distributions actually have some beats from one line of development, the others have the other bits. Other and, uh, um, but you can see how this, this whole flow actually uh, converging a little bit from Hadoop uh, 0.20 and even years, essentially one, down to Hadoop, right? So we kind of get in there, right? So each uh, for the first uh, essentially distribution that uh, based uh, on the tool. And then I come along, and uh, right now we are guess a, a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. Right now we can hear where you can see most most of the distribution of people actually um, have the two as a as a common common knowledge. And uh, as you can see, two two is what it has the tag alpha and uh, the two two or three has the the, the tag alpha and the diagram is a little bit uh, obvious. So the two four which has been released a couple of weeks ago has tag alpha in it. And uh, basically, that sends kind of the message you believe to people in the balance team that he needs to be waiting. Yes, sure. It's the fact that it looks like this, as far as I can tell. We know that it's not the only open source plus R, but that's about how it looks like right now. Yeah, that's essentially all these little um, sheets and, and umbrellas that are actually balance team projects, right? And why should people actually move it around? And they look at the new two alpha and say, like, is it real alpha? Shall we, shall we keep using it? What's going on? And where is it going to be the, the satellite that's ready for the general ability? And essentially, the new kind of impact is to a little bit this this bazaar. And uh, um, make it a little bit more organized, maybe, so that when you come into the, to the, to the sheet that says sausages, you will find sausages in there. And when you uh, come into the umbrella that says soda, it's going to be soda, right? And not here. So this was essentially what we're trying to do, and maybe at some point actually uh, we will come to a final market where a smaller amount of vendors sell what you expect and what people are willing to buy. In a sense, like you don't need probably 3500 features in do, you only need five, maybe ten, maybe twenty, whatever it is. But uh, you want to you want some stability. You want to come next week and see the same weather and the same basis, right? And what about this model? 
meetings is, is also very important. And so, um, you know, anything that can do to improve communication with downstream projects, uh, they're always at most Compared to 
of the two, but at the same time provide me with a much more stable base, where if I find an issue, I will actually you know, be completely fine and comfortable reporting it back and you know, expecting it to be used. And again, if you use the whole next one, it's going to one. Because the good thing about the group one is it doesn't churn as quickly, so I understand that you know, the issues that I will be reporting, if they get fixed at a future release, the chances of that future release breaking some other thing for me are pretty minimal. Again, it's just the expectation that I have historically fallen into the group one group. And that's good, I mean, that's exactly the virtuous cycle that, that you described. With the tool, I think my uh, fear stems from the fact that it's never quite easy to understand what the next release of the tool sort of call line will bring to the table, right? You know, what are the new features? What is the release schedule? What is the release criteria? It's never quite easy to follow. You can follow it, I mean, don't get me wrong. And again, if you make it the point of falling into the development cycle, it's just the thing out of software. You just go through it and you file issues and you hope to stabilize it, and sometimes you do. Uh, but it's much less predictable. That would be my biggest concern as a downstream consumer. That might be why it's still labeled alpha. <laughs> um, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of people that have been working on it for the last year, a little more, a year and a half, and trying to bring it to, to have the set of features sufficient to, to achieve, you know, both a set of things that major users in the community have requested and, um, and API backward compatibility. So I think we're really close to that. Um, I think there's a lot of evidence that we are indeed right on the cusp of, of being ready to go from out to the data. And certainly after data, I think you can have much higher expectations of, of stability and, and reasonableness. Um, you know, working on alpha code is, is by definition on the leading edge. I don't know if you like the technical problem, right? Because uh, you really have to care about the alpha code. So it's an alpha, it's not entirely alpha, because you want to be able to use it, right? And right. you get to play it on the new code. Use it? Yes, but I wouldn't suggest using it in the production environment, sorry. I understand, right? But uh, for the downstream project, like uh, CNN Google, uh, trying to save time, right? So uh, when they are uh, making the build fast in one of the versions, they don't need to do it again. Uh, meaning, uh, so um, what I see, uh, I'm going to upgrade it to 2094, and something's broke for us that we need to fix. And um, I can answer them to the next step of the release, but that can be exactly the same. Again, fix the build. Uh, which is essentially an added to one line, and this is a very important downstream project. I don't know if it's here to make it work on the head. Which is actually a reasonable use of alpha, right? Yeah, exactly. The, the 201, 202, and 203 have been explicitly labeled alpha. Um, so, you know, the, the release manager has circulated a, a proposal with the that he feels would, or that he hopes at least will be adequate to bring the 205 version to beta. And if we can achieve that, and I think we can, then, you know, things should improve for the downstream projects. But, but yeah, you know, going from 201 alpha to 202 alpha to 203 alpha, yeah, you would even expect some change, right? I want to introduce this slide with you and Greg, right? We have these great slides over here. Now I'm just, now this one here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Now we're going to go. Here we go. Now we're going to go. Here we go. Yeah. And so, we actually did these kind of two lines of the new tool development. One line is the new tool S, and the second line is the 21S, which was the state of the of the agreement as of last night. So and the idea was that 
we freeze new features in two of X and stabilize it up to the point where it's useful by downstream points. And whether we do incompatible goes into the next two, one, or two D or two four and so on and so forth, which gives us that kind of interesting ability to cook up the business events like well then we can do them every two weeks if we just talk this on two OS one. However, during that time people can start using the doing you know, feedback and what's not and during that time two one becomes a little bit mature because bringing bringing new features actually essentially to start, right? So two one becomes mature and at some point people can move to what is not like an incompatible version of the little 2.1x and then at the same time you can actually add more features and start doing 2.2 and so on and so forth. So basically this is a typical software development model where you freeze the development at some point and you stabilize it. If you have the ability to bump up the major version and you keep going. So GCC for example the order was exactly like that. Linux version, uh, Linux kernel versions were exactly like that. Version 1.0 was being much better than version 2. Version 2 was kind of better than version 2, and so on and so forth. So why not? Why not follow the same model? It's it's okay to be not ready, I guess, for for waiting for the build, but it's, it's probably good to be stable, don't you think? So um I think the key issue here is that we have an opportunity to put enough stuff in while it's still at alpha to maintain the API backward compatibility through you know, the next four or five generations of work on the 2x, 2x, y, one. Um, I think the community to date has made a judgment that that's a really valuable hole that it's worth waiting for. Um, the, the fact that people are beginning to get impatient now, I think, is consistent with the fact that we're also really close to achieving that goal, right? And when everybody is saying, oh, wow, we're so far away from, from achieving you know, API consistency, we better wait. And now people are saying, we're really close. All we need to do is this little bit and we'll stabilize. And, and, and people love that. And, and so people are getting antsy and impatient. And it's perfectly useful. That's how things move forward. Um, but I do think that, uh, you know, waiting forward to, to achieve that goal uh, has been, look, you know, it doesn't really matter what I think is appropriate. The judgment of the community has been to, to do that. And I think we're very close to achieving that. Okay, okay. I don't disagree, but if you can go back to the very first slide, by any chance. This is presented 40 years of that position. Okay, so I actually would like to quickly jump in on something that you just said. And suppose we all agree that now is exactly the right time to you know, push the final set of features out. You know, label it whatever is the appropriate label for a more general consumption. Uh, what is the next step? So, if I go into a major repository today, right? And if you know, if I download, let's say, uh, you know, my HH dependency, well, that HH dependency is the very latest one. Like that's the latest release. You have to compile it against the new one. Like, by the way, version 96 was way different from 94. That is true. Yes. But all of the all of this sort of infrastructure, again, there's this is stuck in that old version of the group. So if we all as a community agree that now is the right time, what what do you guys think would be the right steps that we should take to encourage all of this right things to happen? Or should we just sit back and you know, expect that to happen again? Four things. There's a big community out there. I think that it's really going to be up to the major users. I mean, throughout its history, the, the progress of the 
off of the platform and has been driven by half a dozen really good companies that were willing to put a lot of resources into it. And, and I think that those companies continue to be extremely important and influential users, and we're going to be, have our ears open to, to take the feedback from them. At the same time, that marketplace is growing hugely. Now, instead of half a dozen major users, there's 30, 40 you know, major customers, uh, major companies using I say customers in the sense of customers of the open source code for, for Apache to do. Um, you know, those major users are going to give us direction there. And I think we're probably going to do a fairly classic software evolution, revolution, evolution cycle thing. Where um, you know version two will will last for four or five generations over the next couple of years, while version three proceeds with some bold new initiatives. I can see this live again. You want to see this live again? I, I didn't really <laughs> catch what you said about the slide. Yeah. I said that these rookie girls play, these rookie girls play, these events. Four years of the new evolution, and it probably includes, uh, I don't know, C7, 8 generations? So we can all tell that the new will be there, the new will be there for four generations. It might be there for C, so it might be there for two, right? And um, do you want to comment on the previous question? Because I have another question. Do you, do you want to comment yeah, on the previous question? I guess the question I have for you, so suppose you can do the communication requires the you know, 209 is the one is the one, right? Uh, what would it take for you to actually do all the work that's required in publishing your own artifacts, retooling your unit test, you know, changing the expectations of your community, actually latch most of that version? What do you think would be the amount of work? And what is the likelihood that the community as a whole would be willing to sort of undertake that work? Uh, what's next? So basically, how hard is it to go from the current state of alpha uh, for use as downstream for the customer?
So I, I 